I V M. TED's impact stems from a unique contract between speakers and audience. The latter granting focus attention to what's happening on stage, and the speakers investing time, energy, passion to ensure that every moment of that attention is rewarded. It is this unique contract that allows us now to go full spectrum. But the term covers more than just form and format. Content will span the full spectrum of knowledge of okay, what okay, TEDx stop, stands. Okay, okay, stop, stop, <laughs> guys. Uh, you know, don't be surprised. It's not like you were not listening a TED talk, but uh, I have a guest today uh, who is what I call, you know. So we we look at diamonds and we look at uh, jewels, but the people who actually discover these diamonds and discover these jewels are called the jewelers or the diamond merchants. And we literally have one such uh, johari uh, whose job is to find these amazing TED speakers, uh, organize these amazing TED events, and hang out with uh, uh, all the cool people in the world. Uh, he organizes uh, possibly one of the biggest TEDx events in the world called TEDx Gateway. But you know what? I know this guy like way, way beyond. I mean, for long, long time back, uh, it's a great pleasure to have somebody who actually I consider my younger brother, uh, none other than Yashraj, Yashraj Akashi. Yashraj, welcome to the show. Hi, Vishal. How are you? I'm sorry I interrupted your TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's so, okay. so tell I me. I never give these talks. I know, I know. So, <laughs> how, so how many TED talks have you now been able to, or TED speakers in total over the last so many years you've been able to put together? So, through TEDx Gateway itself, I think three hundred plus minus plus usually. Yeah, three hundred speakers yeah. and other TEDxes and all. Maybe I don't know, good number. Let's say that at least a thousand people in in oh, in so a way. thousands if that we have gone through met try to build things my team at any given point of time will look at 2000 odd names so yeah a lot of yeah. lot of people so i i know a lot of our listeners are aware of ted uh, you know only if, if you if you you have to live in a cave if you have not seen a ted talk uh, there are jokes made about it already now in <laughs> fact uh, But I think the best thing about uh, the TED experience is a lot of people just look at the finished product. They just look at the talk, yeah. which is four minute, ten minute, twenty minute long. But you know, producing that, getting mm. that ten minutes out of a speaker is what is the biggest task of a curator. So, so tell me something about how did you go about you know doing this, and which was been your uh, most challenging talk ever. so it's producing wonder right um it's it's imagine this you as a human have to find another human who's doing something that will impact many more humans so there's this this human into human into human connection and being able to predict what the end part of it is a little difficult right but you need to understand what producing wonder means so we've gone through so many names so many individuals from so many different walks of life from from my youngest speaker being 6 to the oldest one being 91 91 years old yeah she uh, i think 92 right now but she is a tour guide in mumbai i mean she's been a tour guide since years probably the oldest in india and it was inspiring to just meet her you know or even um, you know not just one single individual but groups of them like last year we hosted five grammy award winners on stage with a total of 30 people playing along with them bringing all of that together wow i mean every year we end up learning so many new things in in that time frame of 6 to 7 months that we produce tedx gateway that there is there isn't any one particular that i think was challenging i think every year every person throws upon you a different challenge but, but i think i think what i understand is that the tedx tedx there are like literally thousands of tedx 23000 Twenty-three yeah. thousand TEDx events happening across the yeah. world, and then somehow the good talks get curated, and they automatically with the YouTube views go yeah, up, yeah, and then 
Ted decides to call them into you know we go to Vancouver every year. So that's how. So how does these talks get visibility, and how does one go to the Vancouver? So one is uh, the TEDx YouTube page. All of these talks are free, right? Vancouver is probably when people get to see it happen first. But all of these talks are free, available online, completely free for the world. And uh, these TEDxes, twenty three thousand of them that, that have happened since two thousand nine have been able to produce this on a very local level. Think of it like a hyper-local search engine of ideas. You know, I think that's where uh, Chris Anderson, who who took the mantle uh, of TED and uh, took it further and published these talks online first, thought that what if you are able to set up a network of uh, these events that are continuously putting back talks to one global, um, think of it like a hub, Repository right. almost. Repository. Yeah. You have one lakh twenty five thousand talks right now. Uh, that's so much of inspiration. Wow. And and you know what? The good part is uh, most of these talks, you know, go across the world. They're just not stuck. So if you if you hear a talk at uh, TEDx Jaipur, it's it's not that only people in Jaipur have access to it, or it's not that people in India have access to it. Inspiration or great ideas have no boundary whatsoever. And that's what we've been able to do with these TEDxes. Uh, to the second question that you're asking about going to TED, um, that's easy and difficult. It's easy because it, it's it's got a price tag, and uh, if you can pay it, great, you could attend. But it's got a very long form questionnaire, which I'm sure you filled to. I filled yeah, to some time back, <laughs> yeah, a long time back. <laughs> yeah, but once you're in the community, you're there. But that's because they get probably thousands of people who can pay or who want to go and attend this, they really pick on, you know, the right set of people that want to be there. And that's a part of the experience. And I'm sure, I mean, I can go on and on about the TED experience. Mm. Four days where you have uh, 2,000 odd people, not all of them are watching talks. It's amazing, right? People think they go there to watch talks. Yeah, and no, they're all I mean, hanging out, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they just go there to hang out with people and learn so much. Like four years ago, someone told me... Uh, Battery is going to be the next big thing and today the world's talking about it. Uh, last year, someone told me the world's going to be moving towards voice and AI is going to be sensible, this, that. And I said, wow. And these are the kind of Clearly, so you spot the earliest trends at TED, right? I mean, we have seen it all. The You know, you are always getting to spot the trends much earlier. Yeah, that's exciting. You get up every day to something new and you're just like possessed by it. Like, wow. If you're able to pin A, B, C together and show people a very different future of things. Imagine, imagine what that would be. You know, and the best example I give about my experience at TED is that at TED, you can connect the dots. Yeah. I think what happens, there are so many things happening in the world, like so many innovations. But when you go to a place like TED, you can somehow make all these connections. Next. And, you know, the idea of Goki was evolved at TED itself, you know, yeah. where uh, there was jawbone giving away variables and there was all these things happening. But the, the idea was getting evolved into a completely different way. But before I go to the TED idea, which year did you start TEDx Gateway and why this word <laughs> Gateway? You know, why not Mumbai or, you know, Dadar or wherever else you organize your first TED? I think it was in Parel. Yeah, the first one was in Parel. It was supposed to be at the Taj. But something happened and we couldn't host it there. It was at the ITC. ITC, yeah. So, uh, I I heard first heard about TED in 2009. And I just wrote an email to... Uh, there was a simple email ID given for any further things. Please contact us here. And they replied saying, Oh, we just finished TED India. You know, and I, I, I'd been to TED India in yeah, Mysore. I mean, yeah. It was my roommate. I was studying for my civil service. It was my roommate who used to endlessly watch TED Talks and we used to be binging on some Big Bang Theory series and all that. And he used to just learn so much. And I said, where do you get this? He says, online for free. I said, no, why is it not in India? He said, no, it's not in India. We just It's somewhere abroad. And I said, but there's an Indian speaking. Is it in India? The Pranam Mystery Talks. So, this was word. Patty May. Yeah. This was Patty May about in India. And uh, there were quite a few other Indians that had given a talk. But the point being... It wasn't in India. And I said, why not? Like, you know, we just went into this conversation saying, maybe no one really respects uh, such a platform because who will come and listen to unknown voices? And that's when I said, I want to work for these guys or at least do something. You know, I had a background 
with some parts of events, uh, media, partnerships. And I said, you know, let's see if I can get them to India. And they were already there, right? And uh, that's how I just started mapping things. I got introduced to the organizer of TEDx Delhi, Feroz Gujral. What a lovely lady. I mean, um, the first inspiration actually was when she said, you know, it's okay if you haven't seen what TED is. It's just the videos, but we have to create an experience. And I was able to connect with someone and say, wow, we could do so much more. Because here we are talking about those debates on TV screen and, you know, all the things that are going around that are negative. It was very close to election season, all of these things, right? And and uh, someone was talking about ideas and I really connected with that. And that's how I started working with them. We hosted the first ever TEDx Delhi in August. Yeah, 1st August 2010. And uh, I said, wow, this has to come to Bombay. And we wrote to them asking them for a permission and they said, TEDx Mumbai is already taken Take some other name. <laughs> said, okay. okay. So I said, TEDx Gateway of India. <laughs> hmm. And they said, no, I don't think you can take anything with the word India in it. Uh, what is Gateway? I said, Gateway is the place where ideas are exchanged. Gateway is a place where the world found India. The Gateway is the place. There is that. I wrote like a, I should love writing these long mails, right? And I wrote everything. And they're like, you know, this, this is like an enthusiastic cutlet. <laughs> Give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have possibly one of the most unique names for a TEDx event. You know, honestly, we never thought we'll be able to do it beyond one session. And we wanted to make it about music because the only thing I could think of then is Gateway of India, musicians from across the world, and wow. And they said, you can't make it so specific. It has to be generic, this, that. They actually, you know, I don't think, I don't know how I got the license, but I probably gave all the wrong answers. And then finally I said, you know what? I agree to what you're saying. I think we can try to find out people from different lives. And different walks of life and figure it out. I said, okay, try it out. And, you know, they, TED was just evolving. TEDx was just this baby that they had put out there. Only a handful of TEDx that had happened. Only a handful, like five, ten, nine maybe. And they said, someone's trying, let him try it out. And I remember um, we just said, okay, we'll do a hundred people event. And we were surprised. The first event got, we, we got scared. We produced it in 38 days flat. Okay, we did it in October end and we were scared because five days before the event, we had the police commissioner's daughter calling up and using, you know, telling us, oh, I need to get a pass. And I'm like, we just have 100 seats. What do we do? <laughs> and that 100 became 150, 200. I was frantically calling them and saying, what do we do? What do we do? Like, it's okay. It's the first day for everyone. Even we are learning. And I wrote like a, before the event started, I wrote an apology letter that I'm, you know, not able to curtail the, Audience, we are very scared. If you allow us some, you know, leave in having more people. They said, no, we are surprised too because people are writing to us to attend your event. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that good or bad? <laughs> so we just went on, right? So so from this first event of 150 people, hmm. you organized the last TED for like 6,000 people? Well, how big was that? Yeah, 5,500 people. 5,500. I mean, yeah. that was possibly again one of the biggest TED events in the world. So how did you take this leap from 150 to 5,500? Um, so the X stands for exponential, right? I think over time, um, when, when 100 people heard it, they called 300 more. 300 people heard, they called 900 more. It just kept on increasing. I remember the second event was 1,000 people. The third at, event at, at, uh, NCPA at NCPA, yeah, I mean that was a nightmare. That whole that, that scene was not designed for no, an that event. That was the second event. That was actually the 2014 event. I'm talking, I'm talking about 2011. Oh, okay. when it just started picking up, right? Uh, and we learned our own lessons. 2014 was a lesson. We had uh, eight, what, 1600 people uh, in a capacity of 1200, I think, and we had to make additional spaces and what not but that taught us so much more and actually uh, it broke my will to actually continue further that time the, the incident they're talking about with so many people because we couldn't control it some of our sponsors just got more and more guests and people just started pouring in also we were clashing with another lit fest that time so a lot of the people from the lit fest from the next auditorium just started coming here and some other conferences similar yeah. conferences that happened so we were quite happy to see a lot of those guests come into our thing but we didn't have space and clearly, it was popularity, but we learned how to manage it better only after that. And like no, but I, I think, I think so, you know, getting from 150 to five and a half thousand, I mean, forget about TEDx, you know, 
even larger events like people do events and conferences none of them have been able to get to that kind of scale uh, in india so what what do you really think was causing this was it the shahrukh khan effect you know when shahrukh khan did ted india or what was causing this you know i i don't know if it was anything to do with a particular star i think there were always people who were intrigued by something like this it was just the accessibility when we had 1100 trendies we really could not allow more people because where do you seat them you know and we've seen uh, that one year when people fought outside and you know people were really upset that they couldn't get inside even though they didn't have a seat they just wanted to get inside and we promised to ourselves that we will never ever ever go beyond a number and that's our seat numbers and all of these things which normally does not happen at ted we had to enforce it through and i think that time we made a conscious effort that if we grow we will grow mainly to sections of society that probably feel it's more expensive so right we came up with the 500 rupee pass all of these are small amounts that we could probably you know small things that we could do to make sure people could get access to it and and think of it if if there are 660 million youngsters there okay just trying to get 2000 3000 or 4000 of them to come and see something like this which will teach them like a lifelong lesson or give them so many ideas it's a small thing i'm i feel you know not that we will do it but if an event has to it will probably get 50000 people yeah we just 10% so it never was the thought to compete it never was the thought to just keep increasing it was always a thing that how many people can we get these ideas yeah. to no but you know again one of the thing which really really uh, surprises me is a lot of these events are organized by people who have been in the events business for years there are mm. people who have contacts in the business community social community people who have come from abroad to india so the profile of people who are ted organizers are you know very different mm. you were just out of college uh and uh, uh you know clearly your background again is not you know in that whole thing your father is of course in the government services so anybody who's intelligent <laughs> today wants to meet you that's really what is happening because they want to come Thank on you, come on compliment. tedx <laughs> um i think uh, we never looked outside that way we just looked inside every time it was just about us trying to do better than what we could achieve and you've been there for most of these events right and i've taken feedback directly from you and many people at least at least 300 400 people who i know outright who will tell me the truth about what is good bad or what is ugly and we make sure that we try to put that up in the next way i mean the good part is we don't make the same mistakes we try our level best not to make the same mistakes but we make new mistakes right and that's how we kept on learning evolving learning evolving and that's what i'm saying it was always about an internal uh, Uh, want to make a better thing something that if i was to watch or if i if my grandparents or my parents were to watch they they're a tough bunch to convince for all this they were to watch will they sit for more than 2 hours so there is this saying right which is very like one of my favorite quotes it is says that the professionals build the titanic hmm. and the amateurs build the ark ah. so i think in your <laughs> case you had a bunch of amateurs but they were all passionate yeah yeah and they all i mean i don't know even now most of your employees are interns right i mean they you were they volunteer the, most the volunteers volunteer. and younger people from college you know and all of that right and they are the ones producing an event of this scale and while other companies are hiring you know mbas from all these places yeah, and i'm not an mba i know but i'm just <laughs> saying that you know that the the professionals can't do this so, and you are able to get interns and volunteers to organize an event so awesome you know probably that's because uh, again the sense of creating wonder cannot be professionalized i mean we try a level best to put systems and all but the chaos has itself that chaos pulls out the wonder and uh, sitting here today i can tell you uh what i think my speaker would look like on stage on that day probably the second speaker in the third session but you you can't templateize it you can't put like a structure to it because i'm not speaking about it right it's the speaker so in such a way that you can't put a template to the person it becomes very monotonous and that's what we try to make sure that we don't do we don't put the structure we don't put like the script in place even though you know that suggested a lot of people think that's what ted does but honestly we don't we tell this person that we are a platform we want your ideas to win we want your ideas to go to millions 
and we want to tell you who exactly are the listeners or who your stakeholders are and that's how we start building the talk we help them understand what is the impact of everything that they say from uh, how could they say it better but that's about it no but you know the question i have is that before this you were in college hmm. correct hmm. and what did you do in college for you to organize something as cool as this right or do you think that you're still organizing a college event and it is just that it is <laughs> college event was because i remember you did ma- many college events and yeah, stuff like yeah. that so i think college for me was was an eye opener it it really allowed me to and by the way for everybody we went up we were in the same college yeah. vishal is my super senior <laughs> the first senior i ever looked up to and said aise kuch karna chahiye alag i mean i still i still tell my principal that ma'am we should have more people like this and not just cas and <laughs> yeah, you know cfos and all i think we should have more entrepreneurs and she agrees now finally after years yeah, yeah, yeah. the principal says yeah i agree with you but um, in college i said college was was an eye opener it uh, helped me see so many different possibilities and actually i tell you what it helped me fail a lot and no one no one noticed it i think that was the big thing no one was noticing failure they were only noticing success and even if you wanted to do 100 things and you got away with one thing good and 99 failures that itself helped you build that depth in you to you know go against everything and still try to do something different maybe that's why a lot of times when you try to see that you want to do an event people get stuck with the logistics of it the plan of it the idea of it or who which profession we were always taught to do everything from ground up on our own okay be it at home uh, probably you know clean your own shoes do everything or even in college for example they wouldn't provide for anything they just said padhai karo marks leke edit edit milega nahi to right we were said we were like we wanted to do an event we wanted to do something called enigma and they said do what you want we'll give you a few days off but mm. if you don't get marks in exam we'll fail you you know in fact <laughs> my belief is that you know people should actually take part in all extracurricular yeah. activities in college because that's 100%. where they learn organizing skills that's where they learn to fail college while is the most important all the studious people are only in the library studying and you know most of these people as you said end up becoming chartered accountants and you know cfos which is a good thing for yeah. them but i i don't think they enjoy they realize few years later that probably the most important part of their lives they cannot get back i have so many of my friends who feel that and i feel happy that you know uh, i i did whatever i could do and fail right because there was no there was pressure there was pressure you know civil services and all uh, but it never was like my granddad never told me that i'll feel upset with you if you don't Do this. He said, "If you're happy with what you're doing, that's it, and that's it. You know, that's all. That's and, the only." And your granddad I... is in the was in the police, yeah, right? He was. Yeah. He was. Uh, he retired as DG, police in Maharashtra. So it was a very senior level. I, I, I think all of me is bec- or what I am today is probably because of the encouragement he gave me, and he was the only person that I wanted to show success to. So, like I said, my audience was very different, right? It was just internal. It was never external. and we were surprised with the kind of external people came up it was crazy but all this because in college we learned to fail we learned to try things and you know there was a saying that once uh, amused me which i heard out of college that in inside the walls of college you play life outside the walls of college life plays you yeah so absolutely. please play life <laughs> while you are in college while you are in college make the most out of it no one's ever going to ask you for your scores no one's ever going to say बैट्स में किटी लगा था क्या एंड नो वन इज एवर गोना से दैट वाई डिड यू गेट फोर्टी एट परसेंट और वट एवर मीन इफ यूर एन पोदार फोर्टी एट परसेंट इज लाइक प्लेटनम मैन वो थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट वन में मिला तो वही काफी वेरी गुड बट मैन आई थिंक कॉलेज चेंज एवरी थिंग आई वॉज एक्चुअली इन इंटरवर्ट इन स्कूल नॉट रियली जस्ट यर अर बट गोइंग इन कॉलेज वी वर एबल टू मीट सो मेनी पीपल आई केम फ्रॉम अ टिपिकल आई सी एस सी बैकग्राउंड ऑल्सो for for us to directly go into you know with this ego saying icsc woman and all all that got smashed in college and we went ground up like suddenly everything went from ground so people didn't know you people didn't care about your background all they care about is what have you done that is good or what is different the vishal gondal show will be right back after this break how aware do you think you are of your laws and rights Do you look up to laws when you are caught up in situations? Do you know what your rights are when you're stuck somewhere bad? Well, here's a show that can help you move an inch closer to being aware of what your rights are. 
Tune into Know Your Kanoon with me Amar Rana. This is a podcast meant to answer all your law related queries. Catch Know Your Kanoon every week on the IVM website or the app or anywhere you get your podcast from. And so what do you think what... is different in today's college life? I mean this was you know in our, in my time and maybe your time but in today's college people are so stressed and everybody is trying to study for some course to go abroad everybody is doing sat and gmat and everything right so college seems to be a very different place now so i was in college in the sms time right there yeah, was no sms what, world yeah there was yeah, no sms WhatsApp. world like sms had just come that time right we were 3310 generation yeah nokia the nokia 3310 yeah, and then 6600 happened uh so we've seen this transition right we were in college and in college people are in college but out of college right they're not really into so things so people today forget college people are just not in the present whoever you are yeah. talking to is physically in front of you but mentally they are doing five other yeah. things which they, is they the, don't they can't enjoy anything which is a big problem of especially the younger generation is even worse believe me i'm dealing with a few of them yeah so you're two startups yeah <laughs> so veer now his typical days he is having the xbox mm. then he has an ipad mm. then he has his mobile phone and laptop mm. so that's how he consumes content now like four devices in front of him you know that's that's so close to singularity you know? like like the way we you're in a ted like it's going to be a part of us or maybe it might just go opposite you might just go burning man right yeah completely. nothing <laughs> you have no access to anything anything but in uh, the question you asked about the time then and time now i think the opportunities now are much more even that time we had new careers to look at we had objectives everyone had to get into a job or a b school b school was like the the word suddenly just came up and everyone was running towards some cat mat chat exam and uh, everybody was giving a three or four letter word exam <laughs> yeah 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 and uh, there was one called atma <laughs> sorry atma <laughs> what uh, is that yeah it's that it's the wellinkers required it i think but good exams all of this was good but i never understood the point you know i really felt if 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 someone wants to learn something why is there why are there barriers in today's world there's no barrier you want to learn something go to coursera it's probably free and available and from the source the from best, the best expert best in the world best expert in the world huh? not even some second third uh, choice of teacher that probably wants to teach you or not teach you or you know in some in some four wall infrastructure so i think uh, opportunities have increased but at the same time attention and probably uh, many more things people really consider this wanderlust phase as like you know you know forget doing anything just travel the world and all no, i think it's people extremes. think that becoming successful is so easy all i need is a youtube channel and that's it i will have millions of people and i'll make millions of dollars that is what people all the millions. young people no one thinks millions boss yes. billions so zamane mein aap everyone thinks billions you know and if you ask them kitne zero nahi pata <laughs> so i i remember i was in this uh, bombay stock exchange uh, talk or some symposium and there were some 800 kids in front and i asked them uh tell me one purely indian startup you guys are really proud of and you know one guy stands up and uh, you know he's just saying uh, what what kind of indian startup so i said no any home grown startup and all so they all started thinking 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 they didn't have answers okay they just didn't have answers and that was an eye opener this generation was so disconnected from their own they were outside more than inside right some people said you know whatsapp is big in india so they assume ki maybe a startup which is big in india it's not whatsapp coming to india means it's already global right no one ever ever said uh, future group for example i think that was a startup that went big or no one ever said go ki india games I was really looking at these guys who probably skipped one or two generations and are plugged elsewhere. That's the problem in almost every four walls. They're elsewhere. They they're not making anything for their immediate consumption. They're not internalizing. They're elsewhere. So how do you find inspiring ideas for this generation? Who is elsewhere? My team is young. This this if I want to find I mean Aryan he's 14 <laughs> yeah yeah of course i mean he's the validation point for me 
the one big reason why I tell my team listen to Aryan is because if he does not like it, if a fourteen year old kid does not understand or like it. Boss, five years later, these guys are going to be the consuming population. They will <laughs> exactly, not like it. Exactly. So I think an average size of the, I mean, average age group of the team is 22 to 24 maybe. And um, I literally look at their face expression when I drop an idea and say, what do you think of this guy who's probably uh, reinventing the wheel? And if they get it or not get it, that's, that's exactly what decides it. I mean, it's there are many more things to it, but... You know, if your if your consumer is going to be this age group, build for the consumer. No, because as I said, you are literally right now in the business of collecting ideas. Mm. You know, that is a very difficult thing. You know, we say that ideas are damn a dozen, but how do you differentiate the good and the bad ideas? No, I don't collect. I don't think I'm I'm anyone to collect ideas. I don't think so. I'm no one to be a no. But when you are presenting of, the twenty or thirty people. You are collecting and presenting the best ideas, but you have to see 20,000 other ideas. That's much of a responsibility, honestly, if you put it that way. I think what we do is we literally try to see who, which idea uh, would matter, put our perspective to it and share it. So they, if somebody is listening to this podcast and wants to come and present their idea on TEDx Gateway, what is your recommendation to them? What do they have to do to, you know, impress these kids who are in your team who are <laughs> evaluating these ideas I would, if it was a few years ago I would just say be profound but that's <laughs> not the case these guys cut through bullshit <laughs> like ah, boss chala jaya say like they're the swipe right or left generation right yeah. <laughs> and it happens in seconds in and seconds. they have the choice saying if they're not going to listen to you they're looking at their phone so goodbye boss yeah. um, I think I think something really meaningful the first thing people my team really tunes into good. You know, is this person doing good? Is this person doing something meaningful? And they're very smart in catching uh, people who are, you know, probably floozies in terms of doing hundreds of things, but not one thing. They, they, they are very good at catching people who are just speaking for the heck of it. They're very good. This generation cuts through the crap because they value their own time. Because they have so much better to do apart from doing this they're very cutthroat. So when you put a good idea in front of them, and if it does not last the first three seconds, honestly, the first three seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, one minute, 125 and 140. These are the circles we draw in a talk and say, is this making sense in the first three seconds? I mean, not that we force the speaker to, but if you are able to catch an attention online in three seconds, that's Facebook's time for changing a video and for you to play, the autoplay time. Then the 10 seconds for them to buy in. Then the 30 seconds for them to understand. And then the 1 minute 20 seconds for them to understand where you're going to. Because each of these places is a drop point. Okay, this is what you've learned. And if you're not relevant to them in those drop points. So you're saying 3 seconds, then, then 10 three, seconds? 10, 30, 45, 1, 130, 145. There are many, many of these stops. It's not a formula. But some of the most amazing talks tell you what they want to tell you for the next 8 minutes in the first 30 seconds itself. Okay, you see Ramesh Raskar's talk. Ramesh what, what is a genius. genius. <laughs> he knows how to put a technical idea in a very easy to understand perspective. 10 seconds he has bought you in. Okay, 30-40 seconds he has another buy-in. A minute later, you are, you are dying to hear him. A minute and a half later, he tells you the idea and you're like, boss, Take my attention. It's all yours. Right? Ramesh does that. I think I learned so much when when I was in uh, this one room and Ramesh was uh, just being, was all nervous about his talk on stage at TED Global. And I was like, boss, you'll be all fine. And you know the kind of effort he was putting to do that. But on stage, effortless. Effortless. And he was talking about this camera that can look around corners. Yeah. And it has so, I many technical, that talk, yeah. so many technical terms but he said it so well. Or even a TEDx Gateway or TEDx Boston talk. So, right? so give, give give everybody a sense of how much preparation or rehearsal or practicing goes into a TED talk. Because people just see the final result and they think, oh, this guy came yeah. and, you know, suddenly gave this talk. There are, and, there. Hmm? <laughs> there are a lot of edits that no, go but, in, but yeah. What, what is a typical preparation time? How much time would it take for somebody to deliver? Depen depends completely. Look, um, I was very inspired when I saw Hans Dalal. 
Hans uh, is a tiger conservationist. At the same time, uh, at a very young age, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Hans probably took a good month to even get to building his stock. And he had so much of difficulties in standing there. And I mean, you know, we hadn't confirmed him till the end. But deep down my heart, I was always sure that I'm going to put him on stage. I just wanted him to cross that threshold and, you know, be confident enough that he can deliver it. Or Sudhara Kolve, 41 rehearsals across two He's months. He's a photographer, yeah. And now Padmashri. Padmashri, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but amazing. The the kind of passion, I think he comes and tells us, the, the kind of hard work you so guys put in 41 rehearsals. 41 rehearsals, that means multiple others off stage. Or multiple others of our office space or whatever. So 41 were on stage rehearsals. So yeah, you can... Basically on the red dot. Yeah, you can assume that there are at least 100 out <laughs> off stage. Yeah, I'm sure any of my speakers at 3 o'clock at night, if they see Ashraj just calling me, they started the line. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, my team uh, would probably know their lines more than them. And that passion, even as of today, while we are building these talks and you know we are trying to find these lines, we are trying to figure what is a better way of doing it. But honestly, we can only encourage people. Eventually, they'll find a better way of it. And all this is a process. It's it's not like a best talk is delivered over one time. In fact, a first draft is probably going to change 100 times over. So is there any talk, you know, out of all the talks which you have, you know, curated or listened to, which has affected you personally to the extent that you had to do some changes in your own life? Hmm quite a few yeah. when you're when you're when you have a ringside view of all of this and you probably get to select and put these talks on stage you first put it because it's going to affect you first like I said internalize right uh, Sudhara Kolwe's talk on uh, what does human dignity really mean from the lens of conservatory workers affected me a lot because it showed us how as humans we ourselves create these invisible classes not just that it's about Dalits being uh, conservatory workers and all but just about how he said um uh, the one who you call the kachra wala is actually cleaning the kachra you make. He is the safai wala. Mm. It made me start looking at things in a very different way. Okay. Or Sunam Wangchuk, when he spoke about education and how the best colleges and schools in the country are all posting 99% uh, or 98% cutoffs. He said, and, and students were not getting through a large number. It wasn't the students failing. It was the system that was failing. Made me remember how it was for us in school or college. And I was like, you're right. In this way, India is never going to prosper. You'll probably be feeling inferior because your marks are inferior. And you'll never ever do up a job that is a job creator's role or you'll always be a person who'll be seeking an outsourcing or a you know, second thing, second line job, right? All of these things affect me to think every day, what ideas do you want to put out there? Uh, I personally was very also very affected by Chetna Gala's talk. Chetna Gala ji was... Uh, a speaker at TEDx Gateway 2013 and then we are, we are hoping she'll be the guest on the show in the next season oh you should get her yeah out of the world I think very few women have that power within them to and her story of it. yeah how she has built that bank was amazing so much more what she's doing right now the cattle camp story you should ask yeah, her yeah yeah so Chetna ji again she said against all odds they went through and they fought this. So I, I always, through these speakers, I've learned so much that, I mean, honestly, it's just amazing. I think I owe all my success to them because they really inspire you. Every time I tell myself, you know, uh, eight TEDx gateway is done, you know, just take a break. And just probably half away into the event, I'm like, next year I'm going to do this better. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife looks at me and Akanksha and I just told her like, so in the last two TEDx is bus ho gaya. I yeah, have a no, break. I, you said you're going to get this guys, the Iron Man suit is come and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The Iron Man suit comes and that's it. And this year we're talking about a flying car. <laughs> and we're talking about Storer, this this parkour group that's coming down to India. And, and I'm like, wow, can you know what that's going to be like? Because you probably think of it this way that you are... You have attention of 6,000 people for 10 hours. What and these can are, you do? And these are not any 6,000 people. I know your, you know, the audience include billionaires, yeah. ministers, industrialists, 
just about the who's who of uh, the business world, the creative world are there. It's just another TEDx. So, and it is not, that's what I said, right? So it's not like the audience is some acha pacha audience. I mean, the audience is uh, the best audience you can get for any event. I mean, I, I now have seen myself that Kumar Mangaram Birla attends the whole damn event every time. I mean, I, I don't know of any other event with these guys would be attending the whole day. Probably because what pulls them is the curiosity. Um, these are like mentors, you know, and and I feel uh, uh, I feel grateful that it's the speakers that we put on stage and the kind of conversation you build gets us access to people like this because they have so much to share so that they're not always public about it, right? And and I think that's what we've been able to do. When a good idea goes on stage, you just don't know who's going to be able to help them. It could be uh, Mr. Birla, it could be a Sajjan Jindalji, it could be uh, Shashi Tharoor there. All of these people... And a lot of times the audience has finally taken up the ideas. Oh, many head. times. I've had people in the audience quit their jobs and Ramesh is uh, CEO for Ainitra. Quit his job uh, in, in, in some pharmaceutical, if I'm not wrong, and joined him. And so many students, because one of the things I always keep on emphasizing there is more students... One, because we never had such a platform. We, we were not on 3G, 5G, 4G, whatever. We were just probably the cassette generation that went to the DVD and that's it. right? That's the fastest we could see things then. And if you see the kind of change it, this can bring in students, it's much more than probably uh, me or you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, They are able to mold everything in their capacity to become something that ins that's inspired them. Right? For you and me, it's still family. You have to look at society. A lot of these things are also real responsibilities to look at. But I think if you are able to tell students that this is what the world is doing, or these are the people who are really changing the world, imagine the inspiration they will get and how will they turn out to be. No, but there's this new criticism right now of TED, which is now coming up where everybody's saying that, oh, it is looking like it's too much of a show and it's more like, you know, it's been the preparation is happening uh, and it is losing the... It looks like completely rehearsed versus original. So online? That's what a lot of people That's keep. a good job done. Yeah. That's a good job done. I think we owe it to our speakers that we deal with our videos professionally. We give them the best setup possible, the best, uh, you know, the best everything. And if you see a good product, it's because we took efforts towards it. It's not because it was made that way. On on ground, if you see it, please come on ground. People make mistakes. You know, someone asked me saying, how come your speakers never drink water in between their talk? Mm -hmm. So because we edited it. <laughs> it's not that we don't, you know, we could keep it, but the attention of a person online is thinning, right? You want to make something crisp. So it's... Thank so it's, you it's edited that, and packaged. It's not like... No, not packaged. It's just facilitated it to be better. We don't edit their voice and oh, yeah, yeah. there was an article that said Ted inserts ideas and all. No, yaar, kisko itna time nahi hai. You know, wo ek time edit room mein gaya raw footage, bara camera ka raw footage. Bas, ek edit nikal do kafi hai. The Vishal Gondal Show will be right back after this break. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Pesa Pesa, a show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. Robo Advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have. I remember last year, the big announcement came up. First, Shah Rukh Khan delivered his TED Talk. We were all there and we saw how Vancouver went mad about it. Yeah. And then when finally Shah Rukh was the host of TED India, mm. Nai Soch, how did, did you see a difference in people now coming up with ideas? Because that was, that show was a much more mass Hindi kind of show. 
सो आफ्टर दैट शो आर यू सींग एनी डिफरेंस इन द काइंड ऑफ पीपल हु आर कमिंग अप एंड सींग मेरे पास भी आइडिया है आर यू सींग स्मॉलर टाउन एंड आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हैज टेड नाउ गॉन मच मोर डीपर इन द कंट्री और इज इट डेफिनेटली आई थिंक आई थिंक द टी वी शो हेल्प्ड पेनेट्रेट इन टू एरियाज वे पीपल डिन लुक एट टेड एज अ थ्री लेटर इंग्लिश वर्ड दे काइंड ऑफ अंडरस्टूड इट्स अ प्लेटफॉर्म ओके एंड even though a lot of times people just see it's a tv show when they go to ted.com they they don't only just see 30 32 videos of what they saw on the tv show they see 3000 of them right and they are all transcribed into various languages 116 languages and somewhere they see one indian speaker who's not on the tv show but elsewhere and they get inspired look it's it's you cannot trap ideas yeah doing a tv show a radio show and all is just a form of getting you that idea and good ideas will never ever ever be trapped and, in fact and good ideas are not waiting for ted good right, ideas are right. happening irrespective irrespectively so i think the more the effort as in we used to do samil cast cuz our venue was just 1000 people we used to do eight samil casts of 400 500 people minimum because good like ideas could not be trapped and look what happened when we said we'll do one event we got 5000 500 people so definitely this is this is how people are going to consume ideas this is how uh, ideas are going to spread even further no, and so so just coming back to a little bit again on your on your family front uk your grandfather police officer your father is in the customs yeah he's an irs officer irs officer and you were going to become in the civil services so what happened how did you decide to leave all of that and you know take up an entrepreneur now you are running your own company you are organizing tedx you are doing so many other things in the media world in the entertainment world uh, and the education world uh, but how, you know, how did this transition happen probably i think you are the only you are the the first business person in your family generation or there are others also so um my dad's a kannadiga mom's a gujarati so business is always in my on my mom's side okay. i don't think we were that successful on the dad side of business uh but again that's probably how i was grown up i i i learned few things from my nana learned a lot of things from my granddad and probably i was in podar which was a lot of the business uh, community was there right they taught me so many things and i'm i'm not the best businessman though but i i kind of like the fact that something unique was created out of all of this you know it's not the same business of trying to sell something to someone or trying to you know be a middleman to something uh when the whole thought of civil services came in the logic was simple i have two hands and two legs you have two hands and two legs we have the same brain possible uh, our existence in this world is defined by what we do for people do you want to serve two people above you in a private company or a corporation you know you're just serving a boss or do you want to serve millions below you that's the choice and that's why civil services uh, was the right thing for me because i really even today when i meet any of these bureaucrats i am in awe i'm like wow they they are doing real stuff they're doing things that don't have to be a quarter to quarter review eventually they're doing they're affecting lives in the real way uh, one decision of a civil servant some way or the other can change lives of millions of people in one go and interestingly not many people know about civil like we always talk of politicians yeah. but we r- very rarely talk of civil servants but they are the ones really running the country right yeah they are the ones who are stabilizing it i mean every 5 years if you have a different government or a coalition coming who's keeping it you know who's keeping basic things straight it's the bureaucracy that goes in and civil service is not only with the administrators in ias ips it's about every other person even an indian audit and account service person it's keeping the country sane so i mean civil service is like a very tough exam right i was told it's even tougher than ca and other things yeah yeah definitely uh, it's the syllabus is you know it was rumored to be anything under the sun wow yeah and <laughs> and and you then did you complete your studies did you drop out what no i went till the mains nothing i didn't clear after that Honestly I think I wasn't too passionate about it though I had the right reasoning and that's why I could resonate with Ted because the whole logic of two hands two legs for millions really made sense here also I think I've always wanted to be more creative and the few people I used to see who I used to look up to in the services they started leaving it one of them quit and joined Tata's someone else quit and started his own thing 
someone else said eventually after this i will uh, go and join some group and become something there and i said no but what have i built what can i build that will last for years ahead so that's the whole thing everything i do is comes with that thought saying what do you build that does not vanish off like and, this and you also briefly worked with the election commission right yeah, what I was, was that i was in usd in 2008 9 uh yeah then how was it like working for the election commission right <laughs> not many people know what happens in the election commission yeah we so i used to work under uh, the additional collector and just before elections there's an entire team set up and they have various other functions i used to handle media partnerships very vaguely no one never thought of it media partnerships yeah. election commission exactly no one thought of it so the thought was whatever i'd learned about partnerships sponsors uh finding the right people to build something so we we basically got into various partnerships with mtv channel v times of india mumbai mirror uh vu tvs you know all of these brands and uh, we just went and told them an idea that look the election is the biggest thing possible that's going to happen it takes 5 years and it happens in two phases the central and state elections and you basically have this opportunity of being present as a brand around it and you know that tata which chai was there was one tea brand which came right yeah, which was the big campaign jagore jagore yeah. yeah it was an ngo funded and tata i think did something and not nothing to do with us but we ended up doing these partnerships around uh, get your voters card in 7 days that was the line like people from different states were asking saying how are you doing it honestly the system is always there to print and get it done we just had to make sure all the systems in different districts were aligned that means our data coming from municipality the fire department uh the central voters department everything was aligned now you're talking about we had 68 lakh new voters registered okay and imagine all this is happening in that year a lot of young voters yeah a lot of young voters First because time. they were they were like we did this campaign with mtv for uh, roadies and uh, they first asked for a voters card and then the license you know that was the big change saying if you are a real roadie you have an identity and that's for your country or mumbai mirror said uh, uh, mumbai won't have an identity if you don't have one right these were campaigns that they devised we built a platform for them to sit and devise those campaigns and be able to execute it and the government was very happy they were shocked that they didn't have to pay a rupee to get that this is the first time it was the other way around that all of these guys spent money to do something for the government so that issued in public interest actually became public interest and that's how the partnership flipped it was very successful we gave a 104 year old voters card uh we had an 18 year old kid who on his birthday got his entire society registered online for a voters card and 68 lakh voters card is a very big big thing wow yeah so you've been you know waiting like ever since you got out of college yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> no, no i mean the, it's it's just so, so, so then why problems. did you not pursue i mean you know i'm sure you would have been a great civil servant why did you not pursue that hmm no i think i'm happy with what i'm doing right because these these ideas could have somehow funneled back into the government right i mean that's what you could have done so effectively so one i i think service to your country is not just limited to services right i think somewhere the other uh, the path i took by putting 300 people from india on stage and taking them i feel it's a much larger thing and I, i'm not saying someone had to do it i'm just saying i found joy in doing it right every day i wake up and i see that um there is this uh, 11 year old in pune who's built this ship that recycles plastic and i want to take that guy to the world i want to make sure that the 11 year old's dream does not no, and again that girl uh, uh, what's her name katyal ishita katyal ishita katyal yeah. she's such a sweet yeah, girl yeah, and yeah. so the smart youngest, she was the youngest at speaker then there was lidian at 7 he just blew the audience away by playing that symphony and wow that's the kind of potential india has and if if today someone in let's say some part of bombay wakes up to being inspired by by lidian or ishita or uh, hazik i am so happy that my job is done and i think that's a larger role probably uh, a system wouldn't have helped me so so you know now 
TEDx is a uh, independently organized event. Yes. It is not something where you make money. This is not your day job. This is all this amazing stuff you do is actually your hobby. So, what yeah, is your day 50%. job? Tell me more about your your education startup you're working on right now. Uh, <laughs> okay. So it's it's very early to decide. So basically, uh, you know this image uh, that keeps coming to your mind about these five small kids who are picking up small trash from the road. And there's a headline on top of it saying, "Hidden in in one of these get kids is probably a solution for ending cancer," you know, and they they will never get education because they'll be treated for the way they are in society, or probably they'll have many more hardships before they even think of education. Right? Uh, the whole idea is, uh, while TEDx allows me to do this 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 huge create this huge platform, it is eventually you know. It is eventually an event that goes online, and it's a community, right? I love doing that. Uh, I, I I consult with a few of these companies on various other things, but while I'm doing that, that one thing that keeps me thinking is this this problem, right? And we've been able to bring in four or five people together: someone who runs a B school, someone who runs a TV channel, someone who's been a teacher all her life. someone who's probably looking at education in a very different way because they run 10 different schools and we've been asking them saying what is the limitation that you face someone says infrastructure someone says quality of teachers someone says attention someone says bad uh, syllabus cuz it's not been upgraded for years it's putting our kids behind not going ahead and someone simply says that it's soon going to be a world where everyone learns the best and i'm saying why is that product still not here why is it that a coursera does only a part of it udacity does a part of it why is there nothing if netflix can go so popular that everyone can probably aspire to get it and amazon prime's go why is there nothing in that space for education because if you think of it it's actually service to humanity if you give everyone the same quality of education minus the infrastructure i mean the infrastructure adds the cost right the teachers add the cost why is it that an ib school has to have the best education so, so is this the big idea you're working on it's the big problem the big problem you're trying to solve a yeah. solution for okay yeah. it's a big it's it's in ramesh raskar's word words it will he'll call it a wicked uh, problem yeah yeah like some people who could probably be changing the world and tom vijack also calls it the yeah he he's coming in town soon by the way yeah okay so um yeah it's, it's this wicked problem uh while a lot of the smart people in the world are figuring out how to sell you something online with a click or how to increase your attention for a few more seconds on an ad i think i i i wish we could have this union of sorts the smartest people in the world trying to educate one child one child at a time that's it it could be any age group it could be actually i think education starts with minus 2 parents start reading books about a child and then it goes up and up and up and there's no boundary to it but if you look at the way education is right now uh if you just go online and search blouse comma tamil on youtube you will see a video with 8.7 million views as of yesterday uh made at a measly cost it's just one phone camera and this lady is teaching you how to cut a blouse piece it's it's amazing how 8.7 million times it's been viewed and there are thousands of people who've commented and she was inspired to set up her own channel right wow yeah and that's just in tamil 660 million youngsters if you could teach them basics and skills you could teach them basic knowledge i'm not talking about a 1 plus 1 equals to 2 not your grade learning i'm sure by jews and many other people are doing some amazing work there but someone has to teach them much more than just school much more than just school so you talking of skills almost is that what we are talking skills about? is a part of it it's just a part small part but a part of it you know it could be learning cricket it could be uh, you know how do you run a startup or basics of it i don't think there's one person who can answer all these questions but i can definitely think of a new age school that can mm-hmm. i can definitely think that tomorrow and also one more space that i think is interesting why do we need universities to certify something because probably because the whole thought of universities being these huge infrastructural bodies with a lot of cost going on that's the reason why they don't innovate probably they have actual pressures to not keep changing syllabus and printing new things and running exams for it if you remove all that 
the the education part the grade learning the knowledge learning the critical thinking becomes more emphasized upon so look, given that you have seen thousands of people coming and pitching you ideas what are the common things you are now seeing between all these innovators who are coming up good or bad both what is the good common good, good thing and common bad optimism thing? oh my god against all odds people are so optimistic so optimistic and that's india i think india may yeah. you know the you know um, one of my speakers was a heart surgeon done 15000 uh, surgeries devi shetty yeah dr yeah, devi shetty wow he's a genius in one of man. his talk he said i think india is directly run by god <laughs> and i was like that's a heart surgeon saying that and i was amazed i'm like so why do you say that he said like, look around you you know all this will fall apart you're able to put it up against all odds there are people here listening you know if even 10% of this chaos had to happen in a developed world what would happen and that's when the whole thought was oh developing world versus the world that has stopped developing it wasn't about developed right and you had these things that are just just being able to be two poles to look at in a very different way and now that's the exact thing we're seeing we're seeing people who say i've done a billion dollar startup and this that i want to give a talk and i said okay what is it talk about my achievements I said why would someone listen to it because i've achieved so much and trust me it's it, i fall into a very ba- bad spot with some of these guys <laughs> probably they'll hate me they'll hate me one of them very close friend of yours uh, but he, i have a lot of billionaire friends i know no <laughs> one of them man this guy is a real inspiration to me though, he's not like that but uh, you know i said there's nothing innovative because when you put it online the world is quite brutal if they don't understand the first 3 to 10 seconds they're not going to listen to you boss and i look bad that way right on the other end you have you have kids like hazi kazi or you have uh, gitanjali rao again 11 year old they're able to do so much more because access to that knowledge is now given to them think of what will that happen also one thing i want to tell you there's this huge influx of coaches motivational coach inspirational coach presence so coach tedx is tedx speaker has <laughs> now become a linkedin thing like you know yeah. people send you requests where it says tedx speaker tedx speaker yeah yeah no comment it's a calling card man it is it's good also yeah because you probably been you know vetted by someone to go on a stage and give a talk but i think in the future it it's all it's all going to come back to the fact that look the community is huge you've created content for us and people are very smart they will see something and they'll take it up or they will take it down right so i think you have to be able to create something meaningful and that's where tedx is going now more and more people are able to create and they are understanding yeah. curation better so you know so i really love this philosophy of yours of serving people to people above you or serving millions of people under you mm. um so let's imagine that you were given the opportunity to join the government Mm. you know whatever happened right suddenly you get a call from uh, the prime minister's office and say we want to make you the minister of education mm. you know hypothetically so what will be the four or five things you will do to this country to change our education system and how can we get this ideas into so that it's system it's controversial because there are existing systems that thrive on this you know and with due respect those are the systems that we are born out of So let's let's accept it that if we are able to talk like this, it's because that no, system. No, worked. but we were the black sheep correct, of correct, the system. Correct. We were not the, you know, I I am a college dropout. You didn't. I mean, I'm sure you you did well in college, but not like first ranker or were you first ranked? Forty eight percent minimum. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That standard. That's so we we <laughs> scraped through, right? I mean, we were not the. No, no, no. Sixty seventies. Yeah. I I never. I don't think that really mattered because I never felt passion to it. Okay, but uh, like like I said. the first few things that you would look at is one is not change the segment system it's there for a reason and exists for a reason changing the system involves you know removing too many things you're rooting out the problem right i think augmenting the problem or augmenting a layer to the problem is the first step and you know eventually i feel people will like this form of learning this whole digital learning if india can grow what overnight into digital fintech right uh, if if paytm could become what it is and still give the best service possible at the lowest price or probably no price i think education should go there because fintech is not going to pull a person out of poverty education will if you empower a person so you need the paytm of education 
<laughs> yeah, I wish. Maybe Netflix of education. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 a work in progress. It's a it's a like I said, it's not a solution. It's a problem you're trying to counter. Maybe there will be multiple yeah. solutions to it. So you know, I also know that a lot of corporates come to you to say, oh, you know, we have to make our companies innovative and all of that. So what is happening in the corporate world? Because a lot of startups are coming and disrupting these corporates. Paytm is going to, you know, disrupt the entire banking sector. We know a lot of banks are going to be bankrupt. Bank. <laughs> <If they're... laughs> Bank. <laughs> so I think, you know, already we have been seeing all the issues around NPAs, etc. Right. So what is being discussed? What are these companies telling you and how are you helping these large companies? So clearly there's disruption. But every generation has their own problem. Paytm will have its own problem too in the next generation to come. And likewise, these guys also have it. When the system grows so big, there have to be loopholes. People exploit it. Similarly with anything else. I'm sure Vijay Shekhar Sharma also has his own uh, battles to win through and go ahead. But they've been able to do it in a medium that reaches faster. right? Banks took a while. Remember? When was the last time we went to a bank outlet? Don't remember. It still exists. It still <laughs> exists. A lot of money being spent on rental. So I think uh, uh, a lot of people are holding on to things because they've spent so much effort on it. And then there are few people who see the smart thing coming across because digital is enabling. Technology is augmenting a lot of these things and they swipe it off. Right? A lot of people I work with in in my actual paying job allow us to show them a future of that disruption or give them access to the source of it. Who is going to disrupt this market? If I want to get into making or becoming a car manufacturer, who in the EV space is a big guy? This is not the smoke screens of your BCGs, McKinsey's. They're great. They're great when it has to. I'm not talking about reports from them. I'm talking about our job is very simple. It's not so complex. We go to the source. So if when one of the clients wanted to talk about electronic vehicles and they said, who is building the next step in electronic. It's not Elon Musk. There was a guy at Google actually who's doing that and he's done that consistently. We were able to collect such people and bring them, okay, for a one-on-one discussion with this group. Uh, The other thing that we did, I, I really like this, is one thing that a lot of these guys are now realizing is that in between the generations that they have, the old, the new generation, the young, the disruptive generation and the old traditional ones, they really want to find a make peace kind of a way. Right. And, and and the founders of the company are like, look, it has to be. A I have new management and old management. They don't talk to each yeah. other. So the vision changes. Right. And how to achieve that vision has so to I have change. to tell you, I'll again, not name the company. Recently, we had a very good meeting. So the company is now run by the son of the promoter. Very smart, Harvard educated or you know wherever. He's in this board meeting with us. And there I have these young people of his management and there are these old people. Mm. And we are giving ideas and the old people are saying this is a crap. How is this going to generate revenue for me? So every idea you give their question is how is it going to make revenue? How is it going to improve my bottom line? And the younger people are like, listen, we have to innovate. Our business will not remain if there is... So, and I could see that they were like literally frustrated that these two people are not understanding each other. And is, this, is it what you are seeing too? Some places... When I'm allowed to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure this is the thing with the way. It's, it's, a, it's a change of a generation. The Vishal Gondal Show will be right back after this break. If you have any questions in your life, if you have any questions in your life, then we will be able to ask you a show. इसका नाम है सुन लो जी सुर लो जी इस पर मैं पवन कुमार आपका सूत्रधार आपका स्वागत करता हूं ताकि आप पूछ सके सवाल सोनू से यस आई एम सोनू हेलो प्लीज टू मेक योर मीटिंग आई एम अ सुपर रियलिटी सेलिब्रिटी और दुनिया के कोई भी प्रॉब्लम नहीं है जो सेलिब्रिटी सॉल्व नहीं कर सकते तो मैं आपके सारे प्रॉब्लम्स का हलाइजेशन एंड सॉल्वाइजेशन कर दूंगा तो जी हां सोचिए मत जरूर सुनिए सुन लो जी सुन लो जी हर बुधवार दैट इज वेडनेसडे प्लीज लाइक आई शेयर आई कैपिटलाइज अगर आपके पास कोई भी प्रॉब्लम्स है सोनू को बताइए सोनू सारे प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर सकता है इसी तरह तो मैं सुपर सेलिब्रिटी बना हूं सो सो इफ टुडे there is someone listening who is a middle or senior level executive in a company 
what is your recommendation to them you meet these young bright people with all these amazing ideas every day what do you think is going to happen to all these people who are sitting in their cushy chairs what Some do they of the sh- most powerful people in the world that i've met don't stop learning they have cushioned themselves from this disruption because you know one of them taught me that never spend money on something that is never going to give you money you know never spend money be stingy about it if it's not going to give you back money or return in money never spend money whereas there was another person who told me that you know you should look at an organization as a deeply rooted tree just by putting one new uh, you know just one new branch to it or adding a new flower to it it's not going to completely accept it it might look good to you you might like that but what do you want do you want it to look good or you want it to function the way it is right so when all of these learnings that i've got are from people who have read something who have learned something and in their life perfected it that's education for me right it's not just knowledge it's a it's a grade learning your b schools your schools add to the knowledge that is stayed and all and the critical thinking that you evaluate and you finally so, come so out with so this is the best example i tell people is that every year i go to ted i mean you've seen that and we have jeff bezos attending every session with a book and taking yeah. notes yeah this is now the richest man in the world yeah he is attending all sessions almost all sessions with pin drops with like he is not hanging out with other people he's just there taking notes and that's amazing and here we have all these you know rich people of our country who are like listen uh, why should i go and attend a session where i am not speaking i think the attitude over here about people is that why i will should i fill a form yeah <laughs> why should i fill a form why should i go to an at- event where i'm not the speaker where i'm not the speaker or I'm, which i have to pay to attend yeah or why am i not being awarded i should be on stage yeah exactly so i think the attitude here is and and the the ted example is there is bill gates there there is you know uh, of course the netflix ceo read his yeah. everybody is there and they are all hanging out as audience members taking notes and getting the ideas from these people and the attitude here is very different right getting the minute you are trying to call a ceo of a company they're like oh you know why should i come and what is in it for me what happens to something when it starts getting rust it spreads yep it's not recovered right yeah yeah so that's that's what it is you know these guys know i mean i don't think they're doing it because they want to save the company they are doing this because they want to learn they want to they want to be one step ahead no, and and i think the only exception to that rule is and again i'm really really amused and proud of you know kumar mangalam birla i mean he mm. sits through all the sessions attending like literally he is taking notes attending the session and that completely blew me up yeah I, so n- another attendee of mine i can tell you uh was the tourism minister of kashmir yeah yeah tasadduk uh, mufti what a bright young man i mean i think you know he was looking like he was he was just constantly down and i thought he's like literally looking at the phone when i went close and i asked him are you okay i mean uh, what's happened you know he's like no i've been drawing he's drawn one page one talk and the kind of attention some people are still old school they need to draw something to keep that in their mind you know and they don't leave that irrespective of whatever we have in terms of the best iphone the best ipad with the pencil <laughs> <laughs> all of this these guys want to put pen to paper and put their thoughts and flow it it's a it's a method of how it encrypts in today's brain of so many uh, screens in front of us they still think drawing it down takes it etches it behind a um, lot of these attendees who i i you know interact with often they are there only because they're like i don't think i have the time to learn this and when i come here i have the time to grow i feel i've learned something and grown and that's so that's addictive for them cuz how much of money you put on to something you're not going to learn everything in a day understand that takes right? time to absorb <laughs> and relate to okay your understanding of uh, peter thiel 0 to 1 is very different from someone who's a billionaire's understanding but what did you do with it or what did he do with it the guy can make billions go into something new and make a change but one guy can make zero go to billions because he acted on it I think that's what is keeping people cool. Today it's TEDx, tomorrow it could be something else. You know, you have to keep moving, moving, moving cuz I feel I'll become boring or they'll become boring to themselves. So, you know, normally people say are what is your hobby and they say my hobby is to watch TED talks. Mm. You know, in your case that is your business. So what is your hobby? 
How do you how do you unwind from this everyday bombardment of great ideas which is happening to your brain? So, as you know, I've recently gotten married, so I really love look I look forward to spending time with family. Uh it wasn't something And I know life. you keep traveling a lot too now, right? Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, I travel a lot, but not as much as before. Before I would like <laughs> want to have tea in Jaipur, let's go. You want to have lunch in some place, we'll go there. And literally I used to jump uh i've taken three flights in a day in in the country itself one the next day out and i used to like that life but it really screwed you over for many things right but now i really like going back home and literally i mean it's it's uh it's just simple family is now suddenly become important and i realized for all these years i could see a family photo and i wasn't in it because i was always running working somewhere <laughs> or even a college photo actually i've taken photograph and never been in it and i'm like i missed out on those things So I think for now I look forward to learning within again learning from family knowing things around me better and uh, I think it's it gives me time to go back and think about the education idea to really put like you know dots connect the dots in place because it's not going to be a startup I don't think it's it it can be a startup there are many people who will do this it's a, it's actually a movement that will involve thousands and thousands of people you're not you're not moving a big rock you're not even moving a mountain you're really moving something that's been rusted and kept out there and yeah. <laughs> that's a good way of looking at our yeah. education system you need to give it oxidization yes <laughs> completely remove yes. the rust out of it. it augment it and so coming to think about books you know you i know you read a lot hmm. so which are your favorite books and what book would you recommend people to at so, least read last two years i think i've moved more towards uh, articles uh, medium.com i don't think once once you're addicted to medium i think going back to books takes a while mm-hmm. because you're hearing it directly from the source it's not coming through a publisher they're not editing things to make it more fancy or come up with a part 2 it's it's in flesh right so there medium has many many articles and many authors yeah. right so yeah. how do you surprise me like the ted button that says surprise me inspire me mm-hmm. you just go and read something i read from ux design to uh you know algorithms to ethic behind uh you know ethic behind uh, your self driven cars mm-hmm. and i think that's what keeps me active like i don't have a viewpoint on everything mm-hmm. but i have a small insight or a learning into most of these things and in my mind there's a world view that's being created which is very unique every person has a very different world view right in my mind i think there's a world view that's connecting the dots to something very unique and that's what happens when you read all these world views they no more books they world views they're coming to you and once you get onto that uh, highway of world views it just absorbs you you are trying to form the best vision of what you think the future is so i know you've always tried to be behind the stage on ted but if there was a ted talk which you have to give what would be it about have you thought about that abundance abundance yeah have you heard uh, peter demandus talk about abundance no i have not so i think abundance is you'll hear it from me then <laughs> oh. no but i think uh, do we have enough or did we have enough and uh, it's it's there it's something in mind but i'll never give a talk You'll probably no. write something. I'll write an article <laughs> on medium, I guess. On medium, yeah, yeah. On medium, yeah. But honestly, um, education being one, uh, education being an actual right to anyone who any any human possible anywhere is something I would love to talk about. Um, I would I would love to talk about how children should be allowed to fail. the first 25 years of a person's life should be decorated for failure not for because then you will have people who take risks and they will change the face of your country so i think you might see that a lot of it is country 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 so that bureaucrats so, still so there is a politician also somewhere coming no, in no, the no, future not politician yeah. I mean, in the current term of politics maybe no yeah well you never you know, know. So you know, Imran Khan was a cricketer and never wanted to be a politician and now he is the prime minister of Pakistan. Maybe he always wanted to be a politician. <laughs> and that's the reason why he got so close to it so many times. So many times. I think, you know, someone recently told me when I told him, you know, you guys are doing so good, you're doing so much of 
good work around they run a social media agency and he said yeah i would love to do something now i'm going to focus on doing something for the youngsters in the country i said why don't you look at politics politics will change if people like you who have done so good in business will get into politics and understand what is required for the youth he said no i'll stick to business i said why because business has rules business has rules politics does not right and uh, someone very close to me who tried to dabble with politics told me you really have to be spineless okay if that's the current definition of politics i i i don't know if i can ever accept myself lying to someone or know that look i lied to you i'm still looking into your face and i'm still telling you well all i can tell you better. that my last guest was milind devra on the show and we had a fantastic talk with the politician and he has of course a a very different world view all i can tell you is that you know the new generation entering politics is also very different yeah you know it is i think maybe in the next 50 years not today or tomorrow when we have a very different generation in politics india will be a very different place it's a fight between old and new exactly it's a fight between traditional and new everywhere your corporations have the same thing politics is the same thing and eventually the old will cease to exist so the smart person in between has to understand that i'm not saying just blindly embrace the new nor am i saying you know try to make peace but understand this is how the world moves you know there is years and years and years you know what that is exactly should be your ted talk <laughs> on how the old and the new is going to come and in abundance disrupt the whole thing yeah <laughs> you can kind of connect all these dots and make it so tell me something how do you uh, perceive Uh, the future of india again given that you spent so much time with all these youngsters you're looking at ideas uh what do you see do you see a dark future with all this you know all at one side there is the division multicolouring <laughs> and then there is this you know the younger people who are adopting internet and whatsapp and snapchat and everything we are no more a developing or a third world country i'm so happy that our generations seeing india as a superpower but i hope we don't become like the ones that stop developing right i think india has an uh, immense potential of leading the way to this new world of everything new against all tradition and uh, it has the right potential to not only take itself but everyone else around it okay and we look india has never captured a country if you see a history it's always welcomed people i think it's it's this perfect leader who will lead not just go against so i think keeping that in mind that's one scenario the other scenario is quite scary actually i mean you know you look at things as black and white and uh, i try to see different shades there but the other scenario is what if a lot of youngsters don't find the right place to live their life build their life learn and grow in india what are they doing you know go to any ib school kid it's probably mandatory for them to go abroad now they don't want because the kind of education they they get the kind of knowledge they used to is is the is the second stage of their knowledge or life going to be able to give them that quality money and all of these things so if you don't catch up there our surplus or our potential will actually fly out of this country and this digital world gives them that opportunity you know one of the projects that i was keenly following up and working on was this uh project of starting a coding uh, institute in kashmir and the logic was very simple there was a counter logic to it but there was a logic that said that if these kids have so much of angst because their education system failed them and they get the only thing they retaliate with is you know pelting stones pelting or sports also and a lot of these things are there there you can look at it as a trend after after the school they feel what have i got what can i do to empower my family i can't i can't get a government job there's no other job there's no corporation that's hiring what do i do and that's where the angst comes in i feel coding because it's online connected and it pays you in dollars and if you're good at it no one cares you where you're from anywhere, yeah. you can be anywhere they'll earn right that's the beauty of digital and i think that's where it's going to right now and then someone quipped back someone from the ministry said but what if the electricity goes off mm. old and new what if internet is shut down <laughs> correct old and new if someone finds a livelihood with something like this forget even god won't stop them 
So since you're all about technology, education, design, tell me which is the last piece of technology you bought under 10,000 bucks? Just gift it. Whatever. <laughs> last piece of technology. You know, lately I've not been buying much for technology. I'm just waiting to upgrade all of these uh, products, Apple products and all. Because every time you buy it, you still, you start feeling shit. They got something new. <laughs> but it's not drastically new, right? Um, I think I, I bought a speaker set. Yeah, okay. those those external speakers. Okay. Philips one. Philips. Quite good. Yeah, 3,000, 3,400. Paytm gives you a bigger discount. Cash back. Yeah, wow. I love Paytm. I don't know how they do it, man, but... But I've been more of an Amazon guy because it gives you predictability. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I bought an iPad, but that's above your 10,000. Yeah. Just yesterday. No, but iPad is 1,300 or 13,000 now. It's not too expensive. Who said? Right? Which iPad was 37,000 rupees oh, for a iPad 6 generation 4G with oh God, oh God. cellular. <laughs> oh God, oh God. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that yeah. That is not what we talk about. Yeah, but below 10,000. Yeah. The. But you know, Yashar, I think after talking to you, I got an amazing perspective and I'm sure the listeners got this idea too of not just about TED but about the people who who go and get these amazing ideas. Mm. Because as I said, right, the we always go and praise the diamond but it is really the Johari or the <laughs> person who's going and picking these diamonds out who's equally more important. And I, I think, think today... I think... We have got that perspective on why uh, TEDx Gateway has been able to put together such an amazing set of uh, TED speakers. Thank you. But if it wasn't for mentors like you and a few others who honestly, I don't know why they believed us, but they still do. Like you go to them with any idea, they're like, you're doing it, we'll support you. No, and, and, and that's the best thing about so you. Like you always you stories. always give credit to others, which is the... No, but I honestly <laughs> feel that like one of my mentors, it was her birthday yesterday. And I just said, what is the best gift? Can I, can I give someone who has everything? And I asked a few people and they said, uh, they have everything. What do you, what can you give them? And I said, you know what? No, I'll take an effort off. I put half an hour to think of what to write. And all I could think of is the fact that you supported us or you were able to help us when we didn't give you any clarity. Right? Someone who believes you for some reason and says, fine, if you go wrong, I'll lose so much. But if you go right... That's the kind of belief I have in a lot of us. So, by the way, I have now discovered one of the best gifts you can give anyone during their birthdays. And uh, there are two levels of that gift. Mm. One level is actually make a phone call. What has happened in today's world is everybody is WhatsApping everybody and, you know, yeah, that's that it. Happy WhatsApp. birthday, it's done. <laughs> but when you call someone, they are surprised because not too many people are calling them. And the second is go and meet them physically. So these are the two things, again, depending on where you are. So a great hack and a great tip is that if you are really, really uh, wanting to show that you are loving someone, you care about someone, do not WhatsApp and say happy birthday, meet them or call them. On this or, note, or send them a photo. Yeah. physical printed photo yeah, I mean uh, basically people don't use the it. olden methods yeah, not old gold. <laughs> <laughs> this way <laughs> yeah don't Instagram don't WhatsApp don't, don't Snapchat go and go and chat that's I think what we want the world to do once again Yashraj it was a great pleasure having you on the show uh, it was amazing and we are looking forward to TEDx Gateway this 2nd year 2nd December please come 2nd December <laughs> everybody book your seats before they run out or get on Vishal Gondal's guest list. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you. you. Vishal. Long, long ago, not in Bethlehem, but in a place nearby, there was a wonderful birth of a huge show, which I like to call Cyrus Says. A show that encapsulates everything in human history, from the first Homo sapien to the last Homo sapien. Uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to India. This is a show which tells you everything about everything. If you want to know, avoid Google, come to us. It's called Cyrus Says. Get new episodes every Monday and Thursday on the IVM Podcast app, website or wherever you get your podcast from. It's simple as A, B. Oh God, what comes after that? Did you know that Parsis in Mumbai, instead of being left at the Tower of Silence after they die, are now cremated. And why? Because a cow fell sick in the early 1990s. Did you know that the smog in Delhi is caused by something that farmers in Punjab do and that there's no way to stop them? Did you know 
that there wasn't one gas tragedy in Bhopal, but three. One of them was seen, but two were unseen. Did you know that many well-intentioned government policies hurt the people they're supposed to help? Why was demonetization a bad idea? How should GST have been implemented? Why are all our politicians so corrupt when not all of them are bad people? I'm Amit Varma, and in my weekly podcast, The Seen and the Unseen, I take a shot at answering all these questions and many more. I aim to go beyond the scene and show you the unseen effects of public policy and private action. I speak to experts on economics, political philosophy, cognitive neuroscience and constitutional law so that the insights can blow not only my mind but also yours. The Seen and the Unseen releases every Monday. So do check out the archives and follow the show at seenunseen.in. You can also subscribe to The Seen and the Unseen on whatever podcast app you happen to prefer.